What is up? This is your LA in a Minute, and Friday, August 11th, 2023, is officially Fernando Valenzuela Day in Los Angeles. That's right. The Dodgers are retiring his number 34 jersey. This is the pitcher that literally changed the face of the organization and the city. Fernando is an iconic and inspirational story for the city of Los Angeles and beyond. Let's get into it. Here's how important Fernando was to the Dodgers. They're not just giving him one day. This is officially Fernando Mania weekend, August 11th to August 13th, which kicks off with a formal ceremony inducting Fernando into the Dodgers ring of honor on Friday night, continues with a collector's edition Fernando bobblehead on Saturday night, and a replica Fernando Valenzuela World Series ring from 1981 on Sunday. But the Fernando Valenzuela story begins in 1960 when Fernando Valenzuela Anguamea, who was the youngest of 12 children, was born in Echoaquila, a small town in the municipality of Navajoa in the state of Sonora, Mexico, to farm worker parents who were part of the indigenous group called Yoreme. Fernando grew up playing baseball and he began his professional career in 1977 when he signed with the Mayos de Navajoa. A year later, after pitching well, Fernando was sent to the Guanajuato Tuzos of the Mexican Central League, which was absorbed into the Mexican League, which meant that he was pitching at a triple-A level at only 18 years old. It was later that year when the Dodgers sent a scout named Mike Brito down to the Mexican League to scout a shortstop named Ali Uscanga. Valenzuela fell behind 3-0 to Uscanga, but then threw three straight strikes to strike him out. It was at this point that Brito said he forgot all about the shortstop and started focusing on Fernando. The Dodgers took Brito's word and gambled on Valenzuela, acquiring his contract from La Liga in July of 1979 for $120,000. Valenzuela did well in limited minor league action, but the Dodgers felt he needed to learn another new pitch to be successful as a big leaguer. That's when the Dodgers had crafty right-hander Bobby Castillo teach Fernando a new pitch, the screwball. Fernando gave fans a taste of what was going to come in 1980 as he was called up to the big leagues late in the season and had two wins and a save. But it was the following season where Fernando Valenzuela became El Toro, the Bull, and Fernando Mania took hold. He was the opening day starter because the scheduled starter, Jerry Royce, was injured 24 hours prior to his scheduled start. He went on to shut out the Astros, and he continued to dominate, starting the season with an 8-0 record, including 5 shutouts and a 0.50 ERA. Wow. In addition to Fernando's outstanding performance, he had a unique motion and delivery where he would literally look up in the sky while he was delivering a pitch. And that drew attention on its own and built the foundation for Fernando Mania. The Dodgers sold out games and for the first time in generations, Latino fans were flocking to Dodger Stadium to see the Mexico raised icon. His rookie cards catapulted the baseball card industry as they were in demand coast to coast as Fernando Mania was selling out stadiums wherever the Dodgers went. Fernando won Rookie of the Year, the Cy Young Award, and most importantly, the Dodgers won the World Series. The chunky kid from Sinaloa had led the Los Angeles baseball team to their first World Series win in almost two decades. Fernando's impact on the Dodgers and Los Angeles can't be overstated. He continued to perform, and the fans in Los Angeles continued to embrace Fernando. This was two decades after relations soured between the Latino fan base and the organization because of the violent displacement of people in the communities of Palo Verde, La Loma, and Bishop. Fernando just kept right on throwing that screwball before the 1986 season. He signed the highest paid contract for any pitcher in baseball history. It's worth noting Fernando was a great hitter also, winning two Silver Slugger awards. Injury slowed Fernando, but he had one great moment left in that bag of tricks when he pitched a no-hitter against the Cardinals on June 29, 1990. After Fernando's career wound down, in 2003, he returned to the Dodger organization as a Spanish-language radio color commentary with Jaime Harin and Pepe Iniguez. He's also been a coach of the Mexico national team for well over a decade. And Fernando made the round trip fully complete in 2017 when he purchased the Mexican League team, Tigres de Quintana Roo. Fernando Valenzuela was a great Dodger baseball player, but his legacy is going to be the impact he had on the community, the organization, and the city of Los Angeles. It's Fernando Mania weekend and Fernando Valenzuela day here in Los Angeles. They are retiring number 34 and putting him in the ring of honor. In the words of Vin Scully, if you have a sombrero... Throw it to the sky, because it's Fernando Valenzuela Day here in Los Angeles. All right, LA, it's been a minute.